Dzień dobry. Dzisiaj pokażę jak zrobić golombki. Today I'm going to show you how to make cabbage rolls. And by the way, I'm Polish and I grew up helping my dad make cabbage rolls, although I think my version may be a little healthier. So the first thing you do is you get a large pot of water cooking on the stove. This is already boiling because the first thing we do is we steam the cabbage to soften it so you can roll it up. Now, if you can find a big head of cabbage like this, this is perfect. It's about a three pound head of cabbage. And the best kind is a kind that's fairly smooth and not real bumpy for rolling. So if you can't find a big one like that, you just use two smaller ones. But this is one three pound head of cabbage. And the first thing we do is we take out the core. You get a sharp, small knife like this, and you just cut out the core because you have to have access to pull these leaves off. Whoop, there it goes. There's the core. So this gets set aside and this gets put into the water. You can see it's boiling, core side down into the boiling water, cover it up, and we're going to reduce it, the heat, so it just kind of simmers for about 10 minutes. So I'll set my timer for 10 minutes, and you let that soften up, and while that's going on, you can start to make the filling. So you need to saute something, so I'm going to move this to the back of the stove and put it on the back burner just so you can see what I'm doing here. So there, it's on the back burner. Okay. So now we have a saute pan which is uh, heated up to about medium high. And what we're going to do is um, saute onions and garlic, of course. I always start everything with onions and garlic. So I have chopped up here one cup of onion, fairly smallly chopped up, and one clove of garlic. And of course I put them in the garlic press. So I'll put that together with the onion. Here comes the garlic. Oh, I love this! There's the garlic. This is very flexible. A little bit more, a little bit less is not a big deal with something like this. It's not like baking a cake. So, in the pan that's preheated, uh, we're going to put about a tablespoon of olive oil. My dad used to use butter for this, so you can see the difference, but mine's olive oil. Okay, in goes the onions and garlic. I think you need onions and garlic to make just about anything tasty. So there it is, you can okay, put it around. Now we're going to saute this for uh, about five minutes over medium high. Okay, it's been actually maybe three or four minutes and uh, they're, they're browning up nicely. So I would say, you know, some three to five minutes on the onions. Get them nice and brown like that, onions and garlic. Now we're going to add, uh, this is two large mushrooms. So it's about a cup and a half of mushrooms finely diced. Uh, or two big mushrooms. Doesn't, again, doesn't have to be exact. That goes into the mix right here. And you saute these together for about another two minutes. Okay, I think it's been about seven or eight minutes total here and it looks like it's ready. So this is the beginning of your stuffing and you put it in a bowl so that it can start to cool. Oh, that smells unbelievable. Onions, garlic, and mushrooms, you can imagine. Okay, that's it. That's the beginning, so that's going to sit and cool for a few minutes while we get the cabbage ready. Okay, I believe the cabbage is done and it's time to remove it. Now what I've done is I take a sheet, uh, a big baking pan with a rim because there's a lot of water going to come with the cabbage and I put it up as close as possible and then you have to find some, something strong to pull this cabbage out because it's uh, three pounds, it's pretty heavy. Okay, here it goes onto there. Turn this off. Now, now also, don't uh, throw the water out because you might want this water. When you get down to the core of the cabbage, if it's not soft enough, uh, you may want to, whoops, I better use this, you may want to put it back in the hot water. Okay, so there it is. Now what you can do is take a couple of forks and just start to separate it a little bit so that it cools off because you have to be able to handle it. Alright, so we have the onions, garlic, and uh, mushrooms in here. And to this we're going to add uh, three quarters of a cup of rice. I use Uncle Ben's um, converted rice for this. So three quarters of a cup of rice, a quarter cup of parsley, and, uh, and you know, generous on the parsley, a good quarter cup of parsley really, really helps this dish. Okay, we're going to add uh, one and a half teaspoons of salt. So there's one and a half, and lots of nice fresh ground pepper. 
And then two more things. One is the ground beef, which is right here. It's one pound of ground sirloin. Now my dad used to put, he said, get the cheapest, the fattest meat, because you want that fat, but you don't want saturated fat from meat. So this is ground sirloin, it's one pound. And the last thing is a tomato. Now this is, this is my tomato of choice right here. I've seen this in the stores. If you can get this, get the Palmy strained tomatoes. It's just pure tomato, no sodium added, no, nothing is added. So if you can't find this, you can also use canned tomato puree. But this is what I'm using, and I have one cup of that here. And that's everything that's going to go in the filling right here. Okay? And you have to mix it up. And I'm going to have to use my glove because it's a pretty messy job. It's definitely something you want to do by hand because it'll take you forever otherwise. So there, there it is. There's your stuffing. You just kind of go under and, you know, kind of fold it and stuff and mix it all together. Mix it really well. That's all mixed up, ready to go. There's the stuffing. Now we're going to get the cabbage ready. And I'll bring that over here and show you how to do that. Okay, I've cleared some space. And now we'll get the cabbage leaves ready. Besides separating them, you will have to do a little bit of uh, uh, slicing on here. I'll show you how. So you separate the leaves. So far, I'm able to handle these, although they're still pretty warm. And what you do is usually the outer leaves, uh, this is a really great head of cabbage because it was real tight. The outer leaves tend to be very dark green and sometimes they rip. So you put the, the outer ones that aren't as attractive off to the side and we're going to put them on the top of the cabbage rolls. And so you start to put aside the good leaves like that. There's one, two, three. At this point, when you get halfway through, it's stuck to the core because I couldn't get that far in. You just go around and cut it away again. Each of the leaves you're going to roll with, you take a sharp, a, a small knife like this, and you have to cut off this because it's going to get in the way and it'll keep you from rolling a nice tight cabbage roll. So you just cut that off on all the, all the leaves, all the ones you're going to use, just like that. Okay, so I was preparing the leaves, and I think I have about 16 leaves, but as I got to the center, and this can happen, they're still a little bit hard. You can see that's a little bit too hard. So that's why you keep the water going. And a couple of these, this one is a little bit hard to roll. So I'm going to put these back in the water as I'm working. Now this is a, it's a cake pan, doesn't matter, but any kind, like a lasagna pan. I got a special pan because I had to make another set before at Bed and Bath for like $15 with my coupon from 2009. They took it. They don't care. If you're not using your coupons at Bed and Bath, keep them. So anyway, so there's my pan. Here's my stuffing. And here's how we're going to do it. Make you some room. And here's another trick too. For, I've, I've got 16. I'm going to make 16. To get the right amount in each one, you can sort of divide this in the bowl into fourths, kind of, so you have an idea. There's going to be four in each grouping like that. It kind of helps me to get the right amount in there. But again, if the leaves are bigger, you're going to probably put a little more filling in. So you take a big scoop of filling, you put it in, here's how you roll it, like this. This is the, the, the end that I cut, the, the, what do you call that, the thing. You just roll like that, you turn in the edges, and you keep rolling, okay? And then it goes in the pan. Let me put the pan right here so you can see. Uh, seam side down is good, doesn't have to be, because they're all going to kind of cook up anyway. The rib, that's what I was trying to think of. So here's another one, a big scoop like that. You roll it up with the rib end first. Use that to kind of tuck it in. Tuck in the edges. And that's two. All right, so two more to go. Here's number 15. And this will be number 16. And I think you hope to wind up with the right amount, but I can, I can stuff this one really full. Okay, so that's 16. Okay, now there's one more step that you have to do. And that is uh, pour over some liquid. Now here's the thing. There are so many things you can put on top of this. It's three quarters of a cup of whatever you choose. You can use water, you can use beef stock, you can use um, some of the cabbage water is actually very good because it has a nice cabbage flavor. You can mix it with tomato. Some people put only tomato, uh, but I like, I like it with more water. So what I'm going to do is do three quarters of a cup. I'll take some of the cabbage water. Sometimes uh, I like to, to mix. So 
this is a one cup measure. So this, I'm going to use this much water and I can use this spoon, doesn't matter. And that's about three quarters of a cup. It doesn't have to be exact. When you do one cup, you can do one cup, but you'll wind up with juice in the bottom. And, it, and if you like that, you can thicken it and use it as a sauce. But the way I have always had them growing up is we just would brown them in a little olive oil and make them brown and have them with sour cream. So anyway, so you kind of uh, mix this up. Make sure it's mixed. Yeah. You just pour this over the cabbage rolls, about three quarters of a cup, as I said, of any kind of liquid. And then you put the, the broken cabbage leaves on the top like this. And you can also put sauerkraut on the top. I've done that too. I've used sauerkraut juice and put sauerkraut on the top and it, they come out really, really good. So there's another leaf and I think this is enough right here. Just kind of cover them up. And then you cover this with foil and put it in the oven. If you have a 13 by 9 pan with a lid, that's great. I can never find one, so it has to be done with foil. And as a, as a precaution, I'm going to get rid of this water. As a precaution, you can put it on a, on a baking sheet like this because one time and only one time uh, it leaked into the, into the oven. So just as a safety, I would say just kind of wipe out the pan and you can put it on here. It goes into a preheated 350 degree oven for one and a half hours. Okay. All right, here it goes. It's a long time, but it really needs that time for the cabbage to cook and everything to cook together beautifully. So one and a half hours, and I'm going to go back and get the one I made yesterday to show you what it's going to look like when it's finished. I'll be right back. Okay, once they cook for an hour and a half, they really need to rest for at least 30 minutes, preferably overnight, so the moisture all goes into the cabbage rolls. And also they freeze really well too, so that's because uh, you have to make so many. All right, so this is what they're going to look like right here. See? You just peel back this cabbage that you put on top, which you can eat, by the way, and that's what they look like. They don't have to be in the same order I did them. You can put, squeeze them in sideways. I had a little small leaf left over on this one. And let's take a look here. Look at this. Oh my gosh. Look at that. Here, I'll give you the pretty side. Now, the best way to have them, as far as I'm concerned, is to brown them the next day in a little olive oil with a little side of uh, reduced fat sour cream. And I'm telling you, do I think these are the, the healthiest, best tasting cabbage rolls ever? You bet your sweet dupa.